The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. And it comes that time to close this wonderful week out with a song. We're joining me from earlier in the week, author Greg McCoon. Hello again. I'm back. Hello. Uh, today, <laughs> today we were discussing the music video for the Keith Urban single, You'll Think of Me, dropped in 2004. It was the final single from his third album, 2002's Golden Road, which also featured Somebody Like You, which was in the movie we talked to earlier this week. But we decided that music video has not that much to talk about. So it also had the singles Raining on Sunday and Who Wouldn't Want to Be Me. Every single on this album hit the top 10 on the Billboard Hot Country Songs with All But Raining on Sunday going number one. That one peaked at number three. Uh, you Look Good in My Shirt was slated to be a fifth single, but they pulled it instead and just did a new album. But that one still managed to chart without being a single and then was released later as a single on his Greatest Hits album from 2008 and hit number one. Uh, this album went triple platinum, selling over 3 million copies in the U.S. alone. Urban won a Grammy for this song in 2006 for Best Male Vocal Male Country Vocal Performance. He beat out George Jones, Toby Keith, Delbert McClinton, Willie Nelson, and Brad Paisley. It's odd because I noticed this song was nominated the year before. Like him for the song, he lost to yeah. Tim McGraw for Live Like You Were Dying. I don't know how you do that. It's the same song two different years yeah um but this particular award he won was discontinued in 2011 but up till then uh he would be nominated four more times winning at three so from that first time he won it four times in six years including uh the last artist to win it the other ones he won it for were stupid boy sweet thing until summer comes around once in a lifetime was nominated did uh, not win <laughs> I mean, I love all his talking. Like, it's so hard for me. He has so many albums. It's actually, like, I didn't realize. He's a workhorse. He really does. I mean, he's kind of, I didn't realize how many albums have come out because I feel like at the time, because Keith Urban, I love country music, just to preface it. Like, I'm a huge country, country music fan. Um, Like, late 90s early 2000s was like i was going to concerts as much as i could i was going to like country bash like concert festivals during the day um so i was i was all about like country and keith urban was my favorite is my favorite contemporary country music artist male um okay. because women i tend to like i tend to be more gravitated more towards the female country singers um especially of the 90s and the, like early 2000s but of like the males i love tim mcgraw i love all of them kenny chesney was like the song that played on the background of my skydiving video but keith urban was the um but keith urban was the one that i was like i need to see live i need to like buy his merch i need to just like keith urban like super fan um fell in love with him and i want to say i knew somebody like you prior to the movie coming out mm -hmm. um, because the album came out and I love the whole album, but I think like it just, when this movie came out and then like that song was in it, it just made me have like a deeper appreciation for him. And I just connected with all of his music and he was, he's such a vulnerable singer. Like mm -hmm. despite giving you like fun songs, um, you'll think of me is one of these songs that for me is like defines like my angsty like <sighs> teenage breakups and and like even like college I didn't really date much in college I mean I didn't really date in those times but it's just like that idea of like still having feelings to somebody and kind of building something and then them kind of just disappearing and then you want to go like was it in my head or is it just like dismissive of it or mm -hmm. like are they even thinking of you at all and Keith Urban did something that like other male singers I feel like didn't do but allowed that vulnerability and like shared heartbreak 
from their perspective of like being wounded, but not weak, but like still showing a wounded side, which other singers didn't do. And he did that even more in um, his following album, but we'll get to that. But like for You'll Think of Me is just such like this beautiful, like simple song. And even the video is um, just kind of like subtly beautiful and like heartbreaking mm -hmm. the way they like, portray it so i don't know if you want to talk about the video first or yeah. what your thoughts are on that yeah uh, well the song's written by daryl brown ty lacy and dennis matoski matkoski um I, it was it's funny like all the singles from the album weren't written by keith urban they were written by other people interestingly enough but i'm sure he added stuff he probably just did and add enough to get credit yeah but, um he yeah he's my first thing with keith urban was like i used to so there used to be this there was mtv there was vh1 mm -hmm. there was bet mm -hmm. and there's a channel called the box which was like way distant in the cable channels and it was a call in request music video thing but they play them throughout but if you wanted to see the one you wanted to see it's fine and keith urban the first time i saw him was on there and they didn't really have country on these but they had him and i was like what this is country like he didn't look he had a soul patch long yeah. hair and <clears throat> look like a model he's australian i'm like oh i bet those country guys don't like him too much you know like <laughs> that's a i he, he wasn't even always that cute because if you yeah. go back to look at his album <laughs> artwork from the yeah. ranch when he was in the band yeah ooh, he's like ooh, oh. like very questionable gotcha. and then miraculously for when golden robe album came mm -hmm. out he just started like he found a look. sex appeal and i'm just like who is he and he's on the shorter end like he's shorter than nicole kidman yeah. his wife now um and i'm just sitting there like going I don't know why I'm so like drawn to him and I just find him so uh, like he's intensely pretty I'll sexy. Tell you. <laughs> he is. He is like I was just like I could just listen to his music and be like, whoo. Like I mean, it was I mean, he was like a thing. Like I didn't really have that same attraction for other male country right. singers as him. And I was listening, I think the only other one that I was really like tingly over and like looks wise was like a Keith Anderson which is funny that they're both named Keith and he's more obscure. So if you know right. country, you'll know Keith Anderson. If you don't, you probably don't know him. But like Keith Urban was always kind of like this, like sex symbol for me in like that genre. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how the transition happened from what he was like in the ranch. Look right. at the photos and you're going to be like, mm, you look like you're he in some looks, backwards like horror movie. He looks better in a t-shirt and jeans than a lot of guys do in a tux or something like yes. that. <laughs> Agree. Like fully agree. She's a, it's not fair. <laughs> like, he, he has that like smolder look. Like, I mean, I know you look at him differently than I do, but like yeah. he's got like this smolder to him. There's something about like, even long hair doesn't do it for me. And for him, I'm just like, Nope, love it. I don't care. You can do no wrong. Um, but he's talented. Like that's the thing. He has yeah. this natural and you, you hear it and you'll think of me and you'll hear it in tonight. I want to cry from it, the next album after golden road be here. But like, he has this like subtle quiver in his voice when he mm -hmm. sings these more sentimental romantic songs or like heartbreak songs that you just want to hold him. You're just like, Oh, I want to hold it. Maybe you don't. But like <laughs> for me, I was, I was just like envisioning myself being like, it'll be okay. I'll love you. I'll love you. Keith. It's fine. Um, so yeah, hey, my, my wife was, and Nicole yeah. Kidman agree because my, my well, I've seen I've seen Keith Urban in concert twice, and that's because same. of due to marriage. Um, I would never have sought him out. Um, and because yeah, I, I just I was the person that had to go with her. To the, she's been to go see him with other people, so I haven't always been like if she can find a friend or whatever. But um, and it's interesting because these are the, he's the only country artist I've seen. Well, no. I saw the Zach Brown band open for another act, um, but that did nothing really for me. And I was told that they would be in my wheelhouse and they weren't, but I, I think I enjoyed Keith Urban concert more than Zach Brown band. But um, so like, yeah, he's like my experience with country concerts and I've noticed from his openers and stuff too, it's a lot different. There's a lot of country. Not, I don't mean this in a bad way, but it's very, it's the concerts were very gimmick oriented, like, mm -hmm. um, and really likes to let the audience feel like they're included. Because yeah. he would do, uh, when he played this song both times in concerts, he would wait out in the crowd. Uh, one time was indoors, the other time was in a uh, like out uh, amphitheater outside, and he would wander out to this podium out in the amphitheater and play these just sitting down by himself acoustic, and that like makes the one the lawn will be quiet, and two it makes him feel like they're 
got, you know, he's not just playing for the people who paid the most for their seats. The lawn people are important too, because, you know, the expenditure dollars of someone in the front row may be just as valuable to them in real life as the person trying to get lawn tickets. So that's a really kind of thing. And then he also, one of the times I saw him since I'm in Indiana, he came out and did some Mellencamp covers in his encore. Um, but yeah, like I appreciate his showmanship and everything like that. Uh, still not quite my thing, but I don't like hate it. Either. Like his music's very close to not being country. Like it's, it almost feels like they wrote a song and added the country stuff later. Like a lot of his music okay. that I've, that I've listened to, like there's a lot of, so his subject matter does can get very much in the country thing, but like yeah. a lot of his songs sound, but then there's a thing with like country as well, like being like some of it's like just pop with a country twang to it. Like, you know, yeah. Carrie Underwood's people like that. Like it's not straight down country, but to just, to, and then the, you know, those old guys, like, it's not real country, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. Like, so but I mean, it, it, it's what country kind of was shifting towards in that like era. But I mean, he's a talented, I mean, mm-hmm. he earned respect for his um, guitar playing too. He's a yeah. really oh, brilliant yeah, yeah, guitar yeah. player. And when you see him live, he'll go on guitar riffs for just minutes and you're just like, oh, like take my clothes. Like you just, I mean, you, <laughs> you just, you, you, you don't realize, but then he'll come out and then he'll like sit on stage and Thing you'll think of me mm-hmm. and you just you just go how did you just go from like rocking on the guitar and just like sweating and just letting it all loose to now having this intimate moment where you draw us all in he can do both which is kind of rare to mm-hmm. be able to like feel someone be so sincere and natural with showing you a rocker edge which i don't know if people would really call him like edgy he's not edgy but he can do that like heavy rock like right. guitar playing and still be vulnerable and intimate and in you'll think of me like even the lyrics they're they're vulnerable like there's a vulnerability into it and it's it's the tables being turned you don't typically see kind of that like a man's perspective on that one where the woman did wrong you usually like yeah. see like a woman singing about like the man who like cheated and then like left and here's this guy who went through that like he's in an empty house and then he's having these visions of like when it was a home like this like that kind of cliche of like this is now just a house not a home and he's envisioning and watching all those like sweet joyous memories kind of fade away but that's him overcoming it because he's not pining so much in this video and in this song he's processing and he's coming to terms with it and trying to let go of kind Mm -hmm. of these memories knowing that like it's over and that sucks and hopefully like there is that part of you that when you give yourself over to somebody you not give yourself but when you share so much life together and and it ends unfortunately there's the party that wants to know like was this all done in vain or or will they think of me like i was good like all i did was love you and care and try to share these moments with you and then i'm discarded like did you forget about me did all of that like not matter and this song kind of touches on it it's just like you'll think of me because i didn't like i was good in this relationship and and it hurts and and he's not trying to win her back in this song either like right. he's just moving past it and i think for me relationships usually when they end like i always was like no it, like i i i it, it was good and i'll remind you that it was good and i think I should have listened to the song more than I did, which is probably not possible. But um, I, but like for me, really like, listened. Really. like really listen to it because he talks about like kind of baggage and just kind of like letting it go. And meanwhile, like my mind was more like an airport carousel with that lost last baggage on it, just constantly cycling, circling yeah. through. And I'm just staring at it rather than picking it up and sorting through it. I'm just letting it just stay on this airport carousel. And that was my mind through breakups and like living there and that luggage didn't give a crap about me but like why was I not why was I letting it circle then like picking it up or letting somebody else claim it Mm -hmm. um and I think this song kind of touches on that just going you know what like 
I have my pride still like you'll think of me but we're moving on and and I'll be fine if you do want me back but that's not good for like that's not good for us so so you know what like think of the memories and and maybe maybe the next guy won't treat you as well but um if you do just yeah like so there there's a little bit of like bite to the song where there's a little bit of bitterness in it still which I appreciate because you know you go through that bitter phase on a breakup and then you like come to acceptance and this song kind of goes full circle of like kind of the the sadness and the anger and the frustration and then kind of the acceptance too yeah well, and visually, it does the same thing too. As he's, you know, we he's moping through a house that's obviously been packed up. He used to live in. He's doing a once over, and mirrors play a big part in this because mirrors mm-hmm. reflect the past of a happier time, and it's more color. It's really cold and blue uh, throughout the yep. house, but it's warmly lit, um, very orange when they go through the memories of them being happy together. And then he opens the shutter, the window. And the light comes in and then the mirror all of a sudden fades to that blue reality where we see the woman is now just there and she's depressed as fuck walking around as he goes outside through the pasture, puts on his coat and just keeps on walking down the road and he's happy and bolster. And it's like less claustrophobic shots, more, you know, just open. And we're left with her just like upset in the house. Um, But which is an interesting, like you said, way to take normally be the man who did wrong. Uh, and yeah. stuff. But I also was for a brief moment, I thought this was the same girl from the someone like you video or somebody no. like you video, but it's not, it is not. Oh, I couldn't okay. find this woman's name, but I looked at them picture. I was like, okay, they just both blondes, I guess. Uh, yeah. And I mixed it up, but, um, but yeah, so like it's a, yeah, different, like very important with mirrors. Um, he plays it well, like because if you're if you're a singer and you're doing back in the music video era, you had to do some acting. Yeah, and he and pulls yeah. it off quite well. Um, they, yeah, uh, and not just because he's pretty; like he actually yeah. is expressive. Like some people are just like pretty to look at, but again, you just want to kind of like hold him and go, "It's gonna be okay." How dare she do that to you? But again, like it's kind of the tables are turned. Because usually you would see like a like kind of more of a female song. Like or he would be song. admitting he's doing the wrong. Yeah, and watching her recover, but yeah. And it's not like there's like hate towards her either. Like it's not a revenge song, like a, like a Carrie Underwood before he cheats type of thing. It's just it's it's a heartbreak song where it's just like it happened and it sucks that it happened and you cheated and and we have to move on from that and mm-hmm. like you don't really want to go like, well, I hope it worked out with the person that you cheated with. Like, I don't know if anybody has those thoughts. Like, obviously if you love somebody, you want them to be happy. Just it's how they handle themselves in a relationship. Really where it's like, you can't force a relationship. You can't force love. If they don't love you or they, if there's something's not working, it's just the anger I think comes from how, the relationship ended rather than the relationship ending per se like i think it's more of the fact that in this song it's referencing like a great relationship where you see them happy together in those near reflection moments mm-hmm. only knowing that she threw that away by cheating and clearly finding somebody else and he doesn't know why he doesn't know what he did wrong and he's like circling through it rather than if they just like had broken up and she wasn't with somebody else it would have been a different song. So it just, you cheat, there's going to probably be a little more level of bitterness than if they just kind of break up because they realized this wasn't the future. And then you can be sad about it. And then you get a song like, I can't make you love me. So um, not a Keith Urban song, but a brilliant song. So they're like, I just, I don't know. I love him. And I do, I love this song. And then, but like, what's funny is I like fangirled over him when this album came out and then played somebody like you on repeat and then had my angsty moments where I would just play this on repeat. And then he released his second album or not his second album, but like be here, which I don't know what is the fourth album maybe, but the second one that people actually care about because right, people yeah. really only after knew the him breakout, from Golden yeah. Road. Yeah. After the breakout, um, which was like a triumphant success, which he actually did primarily write all of those songs. Mm-hmm. And though three of those songs were actually listed on um, three of, the songs on the Be Here album are actually on the top 10 songs of like all time of his, like kind of listed as, gotcha. and those he actually did write, but 
One of them was Days Go By, and I was such a super fan that I actually opened my college admissions essay with the lyrics to Days Go By. Oh, wow. Um, and, and and yes, I did get into that college. Um, <laughs> but like, that's just like, that was who was like dictating and speaking to me in life. And that was his first single on it. And um, the album came out later. So I knew that song before I knew the whole album. And then he released the song. Um, then the album came out. And then obviously I got a big came out. And tonight I want to cry, which is very much in the same vein as you'll think of me. Um, he released and that was a single. And ooh, that song was like, finally, a male singer who understands me, who <laughs> is like allowing a man to cry. And it's in the title. And it's just like, it's just, it's, it's, it's rare to see kind of this like kind of cool guy almost give permission in a song like it's okay for a guy to cry and you like get like an introduction into that with you'll think of me but then he like full-on lays it all out on the table for you in his next album and he writes tonight i don't want to cry where it's like a breakup and he's feeling and it's it's more than about a breakup it's just like thoughts of sadness and depression and just the letting yourself have the freedom to mm -hmm. cry and not wanting to be happy and put on a front and and i don't know but that was in that was helpful for me um and that was in call like that was the beginning of college when that came out and that's when i got to see him live for the first time um and then the second album then right after that love pain and the whole crazy thing came out while i was a junior in college i think and my friend Kim and I went to that concert and we were like screaming and I bought t-shirts and my t-shirt somewhere and I couldn't find it. I was going to wear it tonight, oh. um, but I couldn't find it. Um, but I have keychains and key, like t-shirts and he just delivers. And yeah, like I'm, I'm glad he exists and I'm glad he's releasing songs like, like you'll think of me mm -hmm. and then tonight I want to cry and these kind of more vulnerable songs that allow guys who are, more of like your guys guys i guess that's what you kind of gear him towards although like i think he has more of a woman fan base but like males do like him like male country singers or male like he does have a male audience and a straight male audience he does and it's just kind of nice that they have this option um that's a little bit softer than tim mcgraw or kenny chesney or toby keith who's not really soft but um <laughs> So, so yeah, I think, I think he's just, he's a nice addition to the thing. And it's interesting that he's Australian and his music videos, again, he's very like heteronormative in a lot of the stuff that he does. Um, but it's just good to have that kind of soft, like that kind of gentle warmth expressed any way possible. And if people connect to that, great. And, um, yeah, but he, he spoke to me enough that I was trying to figure out that, like, how to include him in my college admissions essay. That's great. And I did. So, um, and Golden Road, really, like, that album solidified my love. And then, or that album introduced him to me as, like, my, like, oh, I love this guy. And then Be Here, the album after, really just nailed that home and followed, went on, went to the concerts and all the things. So, he, he's given me songs that I've cried to for long periods of time, as well as had kind of these fantasy moments of like fun in his more upbeat songs. And like one of the songs on the Be Here album is um, Blue Jeans, which is a cover actually. And when I was an RA in college, I would play that song all the time, the Keith Urban version. And my residents would just sit there and be like, oh my God, here we go again. And I would walk <laughs> out to that in my car. So like, you get, like if you ask people from my college, yeah. Um, they would definitely know of me rocking out to like Keith Urban songs, um, which was a nice departure from like all the like random tween songs that I liked at the time, like Hillary Duff and whatnot too. So gotcha. they were like, all right, we'll take Keith Urban. Um, so yeah, so he, he was something, it was, it was just, he, yeah, he was not afraid to be vulnerable and like cry and do that. And even though I was with men at the time of like these things, like that's, yeah. Um, I still connected with it and felt the relationship pains that he had and, mm -hmm. and through the music. So awesome. I love him. And, and the song is pretty, all his songs are really like, all his videos are pretty fun. Um, but they're, they're typical standard, like country. I had, I had a hard time looking for one with like some meat to it. Like yeah. that would have some weight and stuff because a lot of his are just primarily like 
live performance or we're just having hanging out and having fun yeah. type thing. So, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's a music video no. thing. But I was looking for like story, some some weight, which is interesting to pick this one, um, because it's directed by Sam Erickson, and the name struck me. I don't probably not striking you, but you will yeah, get to that right in a sec. He yeah. also he also directed the Who Wouldn't Want to Be Me video, but so. <sighs> Sam Erickson to be, he got his start. Uh, he was a photo- photographer living in Charlottesville in 1994. And he was asked by uh, Dave Matthews band before they were signing with a major label to take photos for them, like some professional looking photos and beca- became their tour studio promotional photographer all throughout the 90s. Like he did all their promotional shots, all their shots within the album booklets, stuff like that. Um, he would, would direct later uh, Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds live at Radio City. And then he would go on, he would uh, hook up with John Mayer. He did, he directed his No Such Thing video. Um, he directed John Mayer Any Given Thursday concert video. Uh, he would then hook up with My Morning Jacket. Um, and he did, he was their tour and studio photographer for a while. He shot the cover of it still moves and also the concert video Okanokos, which is like considered one of the best concert videos done. And he also other thing he did uh, directed OER live from Madison square garden um, live concert video. So he is somebody which funny enough, before we did this replacement episode, the music video was Dave Matthews band. <laughs> Oh, how funny. Yes. Okay, and so there is a connection. Of yeah. course, it's th- that's my favorite band of all time. I've yeah. seen them ridiculous. Amount. So I was like, wait, Sam, I was like, wow, this, why is this all connecting so oddly unintentionally this week? But yeah, so Sam Erickson was, um, yeah, just, I was like, oh, wow, that's him did this. I had no idea he hooked up with Keith Urban, did two videos. So yeah. That and an and like, this one does happen to have more like story to it, which makes mm-hmm. sense. But then like this song tells such a story as right. well. Like, so it's I kinda mean, easy to translate something from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and this was the last single of that album yep. that he did too. So, I mean, so he was already kind of built up with his number ones. So now they like came in with this song to show him in a bit of a different light and then like probably all the women were swooning after this right. um because they already did and then they were like oh my god he's now sad who broke his heart let's make it right so um, well, this one did really well mainstream for him too it yeah. hit 24 on the regular hot 100 it was number two on the adult contemporary um chart and number six on the adult top 40 chart so he i mean it broke through for him yeah quite well and it's a, i mean, I mean it's- it's not, yeah. I mean, it's just a nice acoustic little ballady song. Like it's. Yeah. But yeah. it's relatable. Like that's the thing is like the lyrics is just, I mean, everybody knows like take your sweaters, take or take your records, take your freedom, take your memories. Take your I don't cap, need them. Take like, sweater. Yeah. Take your cab, take your, like all those things. It's just like, like try to catch them sleep, but thoughts circled in my, like kept keeping me awake. Mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, I get it. Like I get it. And we have nothing left to like, and I like that, like take your cap, take your sweater, or take my sweater and leave my sweater. Oh, leave my sweater. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Leave my sweater. Um, because we have nothing left to weather. Yeah. Um, I'm trying, like, it's so hard to remember lyrics when you're talking to them and not like singing them, like trying to replay it. Take my cap. Yeah. Um, so, but like, cause we have nothing left to weather is such a, like an interesting line too. Um, meaning like, we don't like for me at least i interpret it as like not having anything to weather meaning you don't have anything left to like endure like it's done the storm's Mm -hmm. over and we have nothing else like there's nothing else to be done other than just kind of move on from it like clean up the mess after the rainstorm like what happened and it just it's just straightforward but it's just clean it's a crisp line that um that just works and the whole yeah I'm kind of stunned they held off for this for like the last single or the four. I feel like in the studio, you'd have known this was something special. Like this, the song has like a, just like a feel like, like there's something like this. It's catchy. It's a sad hook. So like, why wasn't this number two, like single number two? Like, it feels like, yeah, I feel feel like this is one that you would just know right away that it was going to do well. 
Because reigning on Sunday was the number two one. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of why that would be, because it's so hard to remember back like when uh, these were like getting released because that's the thing is like it's hard to remember singles when you like get the album immediately for yeah. single like for singers that's why it's so funny whenever i like hear a song and they're like a new song is being released and you're like the song's been out for like two years like i've had that album yeah. um so yeah raining on sunday was his second one which is ballady like that is kind of a yeah. ballad and and I, has I guess, a lot I mean, of the same yeah. kind of yeah, no, I'm. I'm. That is. And I'm. I'm curious now, because I do prefer "You'll Think of Me" to "Raining on Sunday." I mean, I love both songs, but yeah, I think I like "You'll Think of Me" more than "Raining on Sunday." I think "You'll Think of" or I think "Raining on Sunday" has broader appeal. Gotcha. Maybe like I think I think the lyrics to it and the point of it, there's more sex appeal to "Raining on Sunday." So okay. you have somebody like you, which is became now synonymous with how to lose a guy in 10 days and it's very like just fun and light and just energetic and then you have like raining on sunday and if i'm not mistaken oh, i haven't listened to that one in a while that's basically about like sex okay <laughs> i want to say that one's about like hold on now i need to like double check rain. um it's about like sex so i think that um that makes sense where um it would be his second song and then it's um who wouldn't want to be me which is such a great song but it's fast so i think they go from like fast slower sex appeal yeah. to then like kind of more in that fast again into then like vulnerable um to solidify his thing so hold on let me just double check um uh, yeah I like yeah um yeah so it is about sex i was right um okay. it's basically about like staying in bed and like <laughs> all day while it's raining on sunday and your 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 love is like a religion so that's kind of why that one was gotcha. number two and the music video if i'm not that's why i remembered sex because i just remember a very not really dressed woman and uh, keith urban in various stages of dress as well um and it's a very like I think his female audience would be like, they want to be that woman who's with him when it's raining on Sunday. Gotcha. So that's probably my hunch on why raining on Sunday was number two. But yeah, for me, I connect more with you'll think of me, at least the lyrics, because I've been through more heartbreak than not. So um, yeah, I've got my heartbreak playlist. This was gotcha. on it for sure. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, great. That'll do it for this week. Um, it's been fast, fantastic having you back here on the show. And this Keith Urban chat has been wonderful. Um, so once again, let people know where they can keep up with you until the next time you're on the show. Uh, yeah, again, uh, my Instagram at the Magoonies. So you find that and you can find me on all the other Twitters and Facebooks and website and all that. All right. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon4KUHD. Written work at YSOBlue.com. The Brandon Peters Show returns all new next week, but I'm going to be generic about it because it got me, bit me in the ass when I announced it last time. So always remember to keep the positivity in your online film chatter. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetersshow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found. <laughs>